Hello, and welcome to this very special episode of Terminus. I am the Black Metal Guy. The Death Metal Guy couldn't make it tonight. He's uh, brutally persecuting fans of Obituary. And I'm joined tonight by Spellbearer from the Pennsylvania Black Metal Band, Sylvan Throne. How's it going, dude? How you doing, man? All right, so you one one distinguishing <laughs> feature of your band is uh, you guys all have really good pseudonyms. Could you run us through the pseudonyms and uh, band roles of the rest of your lineup? Well, um, we didn't at first. We didn't really use pseudonyms. We just used our initials in mm-hmm. like the early days when we first started playing together when we were really young. And uh, I don't know, right around when the first EP started coming out, uh, when you know we were like doing the layout and everything, we were like, oh, we, let's try to. Let's try to, you know, come up with something cool. They're not really, there's no, like, super interesting, like, backstory to them. They're just, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, like, uh, our bass player is Guy Skeech, which is, like, uh, Gaelic for something. But, yeah, no, there's no, like, uh, super interesting meaning. So you are, as Spellbearer, you are the guitarist and main composer for this project, is that right? Yeah. Word. And then uh, Guy Skeech is your bassist, okay. Um, and uh, what's wh- who's your your drums and uh, drums still go- just goes by A E. Um, cool. He he prefers to be uh, like completely anonymous, like uh, you know. I get what you mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And your vocalist is Vontharus, right? Right. Yeah. Dude, that one's sick. That's yeah. is that is that completely made up or inspired by something? Um, I'm sure it's inspired by something. He's very uh, particular about, uh, you know, like lyrics and imagery and everything, but I don't really ask questions. I just let him, you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. And uh, you guys are um, closely connected, as in literally identical to another band called uh, Goat Hex, which yeah, is all same, sort of. All same members. Goat Hex is sort of blasting war metal, kind of. Yeah. What, I, how would you characterize it? Um, I mean, it's just war metal, you know. Mm-hmm. There's a, of course, there's a lot of influences. We all mm-hmm. like our own shit. I mean, the main, I guess, like, I don't want to take any credit away from the other guys because they definitely contribute a lot. But I mm-hmm. guess, like, the heart and soul of like the actual writing of the band is like, you know, me and uh, the, the drummer AE, uh, you know, and uh, we listen to a lot of different music. But yeah, like, it just like war metal. Uh, I don't really like Black Death because death metal is really not my thing at all. So uh, and it's not in no way inspired by death metal. So like I've I've seen people call us Black Death, but I get it. It's you know just kind of like a, in these days like a diff- another term for war metal. But like it's it's not really. I don't feel like it suits the, the band. I get I get what you mean for sure. The death metal guy tends to think of war metal as being very death metal-y. To me, I at least the part of it that interests me more has always sounded more like black metal, which I guess makes sense. But uh Right, it's just to me it's a more like aggravated form of black metal. You know what I mean? Like it's it's more like uh it's still kind of the same stuff. It's just maybe taking from different influences like, you know, like sarcophago and shit like that, you know? Like it's it's not really any different than like you know, it's that, or I should say, it's not like to me. It's not real. It doesn't there's not many parallels to death metal. Yeah, you know? I hear what you mean. Yeah, it's more more power chord. It's just like black metal with more power chords. Um, yeah, even more blasting. Uh, right. is so is the writing situation the same in Sylvan Throne, where it's like the main composition is coming from you and the drummer? Well, Sylvan Throne is, it's pretty much all me. Like, I mean, we all like. It, with any band it's like you know there's usually one main songwriter and then other people like the other the other members kind of like expand on yeah yeah yeah, you know like uh but i mean everything just kind of comes from me in my house like just like playing guitar recording riffs on my voice memos on my phone and then taking it to uh our drummer and just kind of like working it out and that's when the song really gets life you know like because when it's just riffs it's like it's it's the skeleton but then the drums it like it helps you expand it helps you you know whatever yeah for sure i think you gotta be open to reworking it in that context um what sort of things do you get from the drumming that you um 
how does how does doing it with the drums help you hear things in new ways? Or like, are there any examples of like cool things that you figured out recently just by arranging it more in that way? Well, I think it all comes from like I can't really play with other drummers. Like I've been playing music mm-hmm. with this drummer since I was fourteen. Like we've been in a lot of bands together. We've played thrash together. We've played like you know all all throughout our teens we've been in bands together and he's the only drummer i've ever played with you know so i think that like we have that bond you know what i mean Mm -hmm. to where it's like i feel totally comfortable just like expanding on anything and just like playing how i want to you know what i mean without feeling like i have to i don't know play to anybody else or anything it's it's kind of like I don't know. He, he adds his own flavor. I feed off of that. He feeds off of me. You know, it's kind of just a very even balance. And it's worked for the past, shit, like, I don't know, seven years, so. And, like, probably you can, like, I know a challenge for me in bands has been sort of communicating, especially drummer to guitarist communication. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we're, we're, like, we're best friends, so, yeah. like, you know, it, it's very easy. You know, we all have, we grew up listening to the same music. Like, I can just be like, all right, like, Lombardo beat, you know what I mean? Or, like, you know, like a, you know it's, yeah, and we, we don't know shit about music either, so it's just kind of like, that's how we communicate, like, the changes we want or anything. We're like, okay, like, like let's make this a little bit more Slayer, let's make this, you know what I mean? Like, it's... Yeah, 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 yeah. By, by Lombardo you mean, you beat, you mean, uh, boop that, boop that, boop that, boop that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. For sure, no. That's that's kind of how it works for for me too. Yeah, it is like okay, let's do um four of those things. It's right. Like a, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's that's good, and that allows you. Do you guys ever like do? Do you come up with new shit by jamming at all? Like to build on what you already I, got? I I am not that kind of guitar player. I need things laid out before. I need like at least a, a map of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I. I uh, if I'm just sitting and jamming, it's all going to come out as just like nonsense that, you know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work with me. And I'm also not like, I don't really consider myself like a, like a black metal guitar player. You know what I mean? Like I, so like my first instincts when I'm just jamming is like, I play like, it sounds stupid, but I play like Pantera riffs. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm a very like, you know, I don't learn black metal songs. I don't like, you know what I mean? Like I, 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 I write it but it's not, like, my style personally playing. Does that make sense? I think I see what you mean. Yeah, it's not, like, in your musical DNA yet. Well, no, it's in my DNA, but it's just, it's not what I like to play. So when, like, I, when it's just, like, when I come, when I just, like, start, when I'm just jamming or whatever, Mm -hmm. like, it's not, like, black, like, black metal isn't what comes out. You know what I mean? that, that, kinda like, yeah, that's kind of what I meant. I was I didn't mean to say that like you weren't like it wasn't natural to you more in the sense of just like th- you know you pick up those deep habits when you're like thirteen, right? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Like, it's like that's why I said pant like I, I, like growing up playing that stuff. You know what I mean? And like yeah, for sure. No, everyone, yeah, the the death metal guy feels somewhat of a similar way. He, in fact, has said, I think, the phrase, if I jam, I find myself always playing the same old chug riff, right? Exact, it's exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. it's it's not like, like, if I'm sitting in front of my computer with, like, Reaper open and I just, like, have a metronome and I can play, you know, I can think about things and I can, like, meticulously do stuff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, to me, is, like how I write music, you know, I, I just, I've never been that kind of guitar player that just jams and makes a song, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so, um, let's see, so, what, yeah, let's, let's, let's just start, yeah, talking about the new record. So, you have a, uh, you're a relatively short history as a band, right, 2018, although you've been playing together forever, I get that. But well, tw- well, yeah, our, our first release came, I mean, I guess, I guess our first, like, we put out a rehearsal demo Mm -hmm. years ago and i guess that's like when it like the band like like it was like a thing but we had me like we we had been playing black metal together for i don't even know how long so i mean 2018 is when sylvan throne became like a a a, an actual like metal archives band you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like Mm -hmm. but like it goes back way 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 longer than that you know 
That's yeah, that's kind of what I figured. I got it. So, uh, so the demo was already coming on some years of development. Uh, yeah, and uh, then so yeah, last year or 2019, I guess you released the Sylvan Throne EP, which still feels like last year to me because we've had this bizarre fucking time vortex. Right, um, yeah. But yeah, you had this really pretty impressive EP uh, that came out on nihilistic noise propaganda. How do you um, how do you get in touch with them? Uh, well, he was supposed to be he initially he one of us got in contact with one another to do uh, to just like distro Goat Hex stuff, mm-hmm. and um, I think it was probably the first probably the first demo, and um, he he, had just, he I, one of he. It came up like Sylvan Throne came up. It's like I have this thing recorded, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know how I want to release it. Like I don't really know what label suits it. I don't know if I just want to release it myself or anything. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh well, let me hear it. So I sent it to him. <coughs> Sorry, I sent it to him, and uh, he's like, I, I like this a lot. Uh, I'll put this out, and I was like, yeah, sure, you know. And uh, it's been a great relationship since then. He's he does extremely quality releases very professional and everything's great i can't say enough enough good things about that label yeah he's made a the your the label is about the same age as the band right i mean he's it's a fairly new label right and it's made a lot of this was i feel like that ep was one of his first releases and i don't, and, I don't know i don't know I th- he might have got he probably got started a little earlier but I, i'm not sure i mean feels like forever honestly yeah looking on Bandcamp, i see august 2019 that's when i first became aware of him maybe uh, he was it's got to be before that maybe he was I, I, doing I stuff know. not on Bandcamp before then that, I, that you know sense, and yeah. maybe i am lazy by yeah. using Bandcamp to keep track of things but um yeah. that's certainly how i became aware of him and of your stuff uh which and i got that ep and i was like or i think maybe i heard about I heard about a live show that I was going to go to, and then I was like, who is this band? And then I was like, oh, this is a dank EP. Um, and then, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that comes out. Nihilistic Noise Propaganda is mostly sort of war metal and war noise. So you guys are kind of the... Um, yeah, I like, think he, he's, he's put out some more traditional black metal stuff in the past i think since the sylvan throne mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ep but that wasn't really concerning to me because i feel like we just kind of we were we were friends i guess so it just kind of was like it seems like it would fit it just seemed like it would be right so no you know, I, I i think that's good you have two if you have two like a specific aesthetic and focus is great but if it's too narrow you know Right, yeah. I mean, you know, if you guys were doing, like, I don't know, nature-y, trance-inducing stuff, or, no, you know, probably, emperor probably worship, good. maybe yeah. it wouldn't have fit. But given it sort of streams of blast beats with a kind of martial atmosphere, you can see, okay, people like Revenge would probably like this, right? Right, you know? sure, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, how do you think... So, you've, you've just put out a new, a new full-length, um... Forbidden Pathways to Ancient Wisdom. It's got a cool cover with a wizard on it. Um, how would you describe the development up till this point? Well, it's definitely different than the EP. Um, mm-hmm. I like I was talking about earlier how like when I play music with uh, the drummer of, uh, of Sylvan Throne, like uh, it just it, it adds a certain light light to it where i can i feel like i can expand more Mm -hmm. and the the problem or what was different about this release is that our practice space got shut down because of the covid shit oh yeah and uh, we had no way of 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 jamming together really so we hadn't even played the songs together or we we never played the songs it was still we haven't played those songs together i went to his house and i recorded the guitars and then I left and he recorded the drums because, you know, the room was like, I mean, there was a really tiny room. I could barely fit my amp in there. So jamming yeah. was just kind of like not really in the equation. So, I mean, we, the, I mean, we did the best we could, you know, I mean, I wish I could have given it more time to maybe, like I said, expand on things, but mm-hmm. all in all, I think it worked out in a way that, like, I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, I, I like the release. I like it more than the EP, which is all that I really matter. That, that matters to me. You know, I feel like, you know, it feels like a progression, which 
that's what I'm concerned with. So I was pretty happy with it. I see what you mean. So it went straight from, yeah, you didn't really, you didn't have a chance to develop with him. It went straight from your song blueprints into recording. Uh, and so, and it, you, you basically recorded it by everyone taking turns being in the sort of closet that your drummer uses yeah. to practice drums in. Yeah, exactly. Dang. Yeah, that's, well, good for you rising above that uh, that challenge. Right. Well, I mean, you know, we had this, like, because before COVID and everything, we had, you know, I had already told uh, Nihilistic Noise that we're going to do this, we're going we're gonna to do the full length, and we mm-hmm. agreed on a date and everything and when it would be ready by, and then COVID happened, and the practice space got shut down, and we were also planning a California tour for Goat Hex, mm-hmm. which, you know, like, we had to practice those songs, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happened before, you know, you go out on tour, mm-hmm. especially in a time like this when, you know, you gotta, gotta, you gotta expect the unexpected, you know, it's like, it was, I'll admit, it was really fucking dumb touring, you know, during all this shit, but whatever, it was, it was cool, it ended up great, but, like, good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, like, we had a lot of shit on our plate, in our personal lives, too, just so much so much shit and um i wish that there wasn't kind of that i don't want to say it's a pressure because dan or, or uh Niles noise never said like it needs to be done by the state you know there's no contract mm-hmm. or any you know fucking record label bullshit like it's just like i kind of felt a pressure and an obligation to like get it done by then mm-hmm. so if it was you know looking back i kind of wish that we took that time to maybe let things open back up a little bit more and kind of like you know so we could practice the songs and like but you know then again i look at this our practice space is still shut down so like it probably wouldn't have been released you know, you know what i mean so, no it sounds like you did the right thing to be honest because yeah there's no i mean for all for all we know, everything could uh, still be shut down a year from now, you know, or at least right, a lot yeah. of a lot of music related stuff for sure. Right. Um, well, what's good now is that I got a new place now, and like I have I have the room now. Like I kind of built a mini studio, so now like starting probably like in the next two weeks when it's more ready, like we'll have a place to jam. So, oh, that's awesome! That's great. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. And uh, like I, I I mentioned to you before, mm-hmm. uh, I just started writing the. I just started writing the next release last night. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a... Uh, yeah. Cr- yeah, yeah, so it's not... It. Yeah, and it's like, you, you, okay, you have those songs down, those songs were the songs they are, and, like, it's not like you're running out of riffs, right? <laughs> you probably nah. got plenty more where that came from. No, um, no, I mean, uh, you know, always something cooking. Yeah, so how would you... Uh, I guess then, yeah, where, how would you sort of describe the influences filtering into your into your sound in sylvan Thron. it's always different i mean mm-hmm. um i like how you mentioned on the last uh podcast the review, i mean yeah. i yeah i uh i mean gorgoroth always number one influence uh but mm-hmm. i mean those first two those first two i mean even the, the third one uh under the sign like the third is one of my all-time favorites of yeah like, uh, any black once, once you get once you get past that like that drum production which i love now but when i first heard it as a kid i was like kind of put it off by it but now it's like my favorite thing ever and yeah. uh so always gorgoth like that's mm-hmm. if you're talking for talking about influences so yeah. like if somebody if somebody were to ask me to describe him then in the best way i possibly could i would say Gorgoroth, a lot of Gorgoroth influence, a lot of, uh, you know, Sargeist, Horna. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Over, I love Over, first first three records. Uh, Prob- probably probably Seigneur Valand, right? Oh, this, well, yeah. There are, there I mean, are, there's, 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 there's there so are more mentions. riffs like that on the new one, I feel like, more kind of specifically well, yeah, French because, sounding. That's because mm-hmm. at that time, you just listening to a lot of senior volume you know mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. like um i don't have like a specific like sect of black metal i enjoy it's kind of just all across the map i don't get as much into the atmospheric stuff but like like the, you know the super atmospheric stuff but i mean um all black all black metal is inherently yeah. atmospheric but like i'm talking about like you know, I, I know what you mean the yeah. the atmo black ghetto 
Right, yeah. I don't really get yeah. much into that. But other than other than like a couple subgenres that would probably be pretty obvious, you know, yeah. I, I don't I don't really get into, but I, yeah, I don't have like a specific, like I don't, I'm not just like a, oh, a, a Finnish black metal person. No, I get You that. know, I, yeah. I, I listen to a little bit of everything, you know, and I hear a lot of people talk about how similar we are to, you know, Finnish and French black metal, which is probably true, but you got to keep in mind, like, I, I, I don't learn these riffs. I don't like, it's not like I sit down and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to, your, your word, you reinterpret <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. these riffs. I'm, I'm like I never just sit down and I, I don't listen to a riff and try to replicate it. I just what comes out comes out. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, like I don't I don't play black metal in my in my spare time when I'm just sitting down and playing guitar. So it's not like I I don't like I've learned like all of the Gorgoroth songs. It's like some of the only black metal that I've ever learned by another artist. Well, if you're gonna have anything in your, you know in your set of reflexes innately that's probably a good thing to have right right Scorgoth. yeah i mean well yeah. well it's like you know i uh yeah i mean i just that to me seemed like the most masterful riffing out of any black metal band i've ever heard and i you know not learning other stuff was kind of on purpose because yeah. you know, when I when I first started writing music, like when I first started writing black metal, you know, I was young. I was in like my early teens, but uh, I kind of made a conscious decision not to learn other stuff because I was I didn't want the the grasp of other artists' music like pulling me in either direction, and you know, like I. Obviously, with the Sylvan Throne stuff, there's a lot of, you can draw a lot of pretty clear parallels to other bands, but I still feel like what makes Sylvan Throne Sylvan Throne is that th- a lot of it is like uninspired, if that makes sense. Like, it's kind of yeah. like. Yeah, or inspired by things other than imitation. Exactly. Um, yeah. I-, I think that makes a lot of sense, man. Um, you know, you want to have. Uh, I, I I know a guy who talks about building in machinery to write certain kinds of things. And, you know, that might mean listening to certain records on purpose in order to sort of adapt a certain technique to an end, which can sound like imitating the sound, but that's not the idea, right? It's more like you listen to this particular record by death not particularly because you love death but because there's something about the guitar playing that you could use right and and i feel like what you're doing is i feel like with the gorgora thing it's almost similar it's like here's an elemental vocabulary i know this is sick it's also fundamental to black metal in general and because it's at that origin point it was so influential it just sort of there's all these you can take it in so many different directions, Gorgoroth technique, right? Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm saying it's the most masterful riffing for black metal I can ever, I've ever imagined and yet to hear. I've never heard another, you know, black metal guitar player that has had such like, this is the composition skills, you know what I mean, as in Furnace. It's like, I mean, I don't mean to completely mark out about them, but like, it's truly Please is do. like. I mean, I, I, th- I think people should talk about them more, so go for it. You know, I mean, it's just, to me, it's the quintessential, like, absolute best black metal that there's ever been, and I don't think that it'll ever be topped. I mean, that's just, I mean, I know a lot of people will probably disagree with me, but that's just, you know, that's how I feel. No, I think that's, I mean, in terms of the second wave sound, I basically think that Under the Side of Hell is the best record. It's certainly the one that I enjoy the most. Um, you could make an argument that Demisterius is, uh... Uh, that sucks. <laughs> that's what i thought when i was younger too uh, Dude, nah it's like it, I, I get it i get the whole like uh, you know I, I i i should say it sucks it, it's like you listen to the other norwegian stuff that was coming out at the time it's just nowhere near like like the like burzum and stuff it's just so much better like you know dark throne so much better than like you know these like half-assed just kind of like shitty riffs i mean i don't know i i I, that's not not saying i'm not trying to put myself Uh, on i think i'm not trying to put put myself on a high horse i think i know i know 
I think what they are is yeah, it's fine. Obviously, we have Lord knows we have plenty of opinions, right? Um, right. It's I see what you. I, I mean. Yeah, I think like 10 years ago, if you'd said that, I would have been like, hell yeah, man. Um, I, I, I understand the sentiment. I think it's good not to... How's this? I think there are people who reflexively fetishize Demisteris or whatever, just because that's the first thing they read on the Wikipedia, right? Right. Um, I think there's stuff about... I think there's like very subtle guitar playing and drumming stuff on that that I think is really cool. And uh, Oh, Hell, Hellhammer's a beast. I'll always yeah. say that. You know, like I, I, yeah. I respect the shit out of Hellhammer. Like, and Attila did... Uh, you know, the vocals are a little wonky, but... I was like, going to say, I don't even... Good. They're, he's certainly talented. I don't like the vocals yeah. that much. I prefer the, you know, if it were me, I wish there was a whole version of Demisteris that sounded like Live in Leipzig. Sure, yeah. No, yeah and I like yeah. I like Live in Leipzig mile, like, so much more than I like anything that Mayhem recorded in that period. I like later Mayhem. You know, I, I mm-hmm. like Grand Declaration of War. I think Maniac is probably my favorite Mayhem vocalist, but... So would you say that aggression is an important quality to you in black metal then? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's the the riffs have to be melodic but have have to be fierce. That's like a key part of of black metal to me. It has to be it has to have that edge, you know what I mean? That's uh, yeah. That kind of separate that kind of separates it from every other genre, you know. Agreed. Yeah. How do you write a? Yeah, that's actually something the death metal guy and I sort of go back and forth on about on the show. That that is that is my position as well. Um, granted, there are certain niches of black metal where maybe you're really just after a different effect or whatever. But sure. e- even yeah, if no, you're listening, there's no, there's no even solid rule. Yeah, exactly. But like, even if you're listening to like Branicald or whatever, you know, a lot of those riffs are pretty fucking fierce, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, even mm-hmm. over, you know, like how I was mm-hmm. talking about over mm-hmm. earlier, you know, like it's a pretty record, but there are some straight, like, you know, there's some fierce riffs, you know, that's just, just how, how black metal needs to be, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think Gorgoroth is certainly near the near the apex of that. Under the sign of hell, in particular, just do 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 God, that's sinister. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So let's see. So how do you when you're playing then? Um. So there there is some quite sort of flowing kind of uh i guess you could say like people always say melodic but that's not the right word right but more sort of like consonant sort of there are prettier melodies on that there's you know there's a good number amount of sort of like pretty kind of epic sounding melodies in sylvan throne so how do you which i mean obviously epic sounding melodies are an important part of black metal so and trying to hit that without losing the edge or the bite is important is do you ever think about that when you're writing like is no 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 i when i'm writing it's whatever i'm feeling in that moment there's songs mm. that are more you know I, like epic you know or whatever yeah. there's more song there's songs with more of that kind of stuff and then there's songs that are kind of just straight blasting there's no you know there's no rhyme or reason to it and i think that's part of what you know to me mm-hmm. makes it makes you know why I why I enjoy my own music is it's kind of like it, it, there is no they said no rhyme or reason it's just kind of however I'm whatever I feel like writing is just in it's just you know and that's what I think makes it raw I think that's what makes it you know you you, you, see, you get what I'm trying to say uh, yeah yeah I think so yeah I mean so maybe like not not like calculating or premeditating but do you ever like do specific things with riffs where you're like I want to make that sound really like you come up with something and then you're like, I want to give that some teeth or you come up with something and then you're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I guess so. I change picking and stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. to make things like a little bit more, uh, yeah, a little, a little bit more teeth. A little bit Ooh, more what do you, what do you do with picking? So, so that's a, a good thing about, so a thing I really like about Sylvan Throne, it's the thing I said in the review, but what something that immediately struck out at me is that you are, although you could easily be lumped in with this quote unquote melodic black metal, whatever, fin black worship thing, I've never heard it as just that. Um, and maybe part of that's the Gorgoroth influence and this emphasis on fierceness. And related to that, um, 
there's a lot of physicality in the plane. Sure, yeah. I mean, um, I have what you were saying with, like, picking. You yeah, know, that, that would be a place to start, yeah, with picking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's like, um, well, I mean, the body of a black metal song is tremolo picking, you know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like where you usually, where you usually come come to when you when you start writing but i think it's important for you know uh to expand on to expand on that during the song just to so you're not constantly listening to you know somebody tremolo picking the whole time so i mean um i don't know and that goes back to gorgoroth too you know like how we were talking about under the sign Mm -hmm. of hell like with those you know super like nordic sounding like uh just straight like uh you know riffy riffy riffs i don't know i don't know the correct term <laughs> yeah, yeah like you know on this new shit i'm writing you know there's like a lot of 16th note parts there's a lot of you know uh stuff like that so i mean i look at picking more than i look at the actual riffs themselves because i think that you know that's where the heart of the riff is that's where the you know the, the the tempo is that's where the where the time signature is that's where you know everything is so to me it's more important to get like uh you know to break up the tremolo parts and to try to get more you know heavier parts more you know you know what I'm trying to say that makes sense yeah so you're cus- rather than just thinking yes i think a huge problem with the fin black stuff in general at not i'm not talking about the masters of the style obviously but the uh right. more and less competent imitators um is that there's just this sort of um yeah just this it's way too smooth for me there's just this even flow of treble and these kind of nice sounding intervals and it just uh and there's nothing punctuating that so you'll do things like what you'll like throw strums would do you like do you like accent yeah, the exactly. one yeah that's, I, I try to you know mm-hmm. it's like that's like my that's kind of uh what I'd like to be known for as a guitar player in a black metal band is like, you know, my, my, that's to me is what makes the songs or that there's like, there's, there's parts. If, if that makes sense, there's like, uh, like I said before, bands there, how you were talking about those bands just kind of tremolo pick their way through a song, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And it can work yeah, in sure. a lot of great ways. And I like those bands, but like, I think it's also important to encompass other things just to keep it more interesting and to keep, you know, myself more interested in playing it because we do have songs that are just all tremolo picking and we play them when we play them live. I just want to shoot myself. I mean, it's like, it's annoying, you know? Yeah. Cause it lets you dig in and get more power and it keeps your hand from tyrant for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of best of both worlds. Um, that, yeah, that's cool. I can, you know, I don't know that I was thinking about picking when I was hearing that, but I can certainly hear what you mean now that you say that. Yeah. Um, because I'll, yeah, there's a lot of um, there's often a lot of force in the way you guys transition between riffs. A- have you ever tried anything where you're like changing the picking within the riff itself? Because I know some of the, some really sophisticated bands do that, right? Uh, I don't really get into that type of stuff. There might be some shit. I don't know, dude. You probably so- will in a year, right? Not in like I some mean- not in some fancy proggy way. I just mean that like sometimes there are rhythmic there, change there might, honestly i think probably in the mm-hmm. first ep there's probably some riffs like that but mm-hmm. i can't pinpoint them there's so much i can't you know. no no worries yeah I, yeah it's i've just noticed there's a cool thing where like sometimes the picking is completely customized to the melody like different picking and different parts of the riff um right. you so here's a question revealing my musical ignorance um you said 16th note parts is trem 32nd notes? Is it not 16th notes? I'm the wrong guy to ask. All right, but, uh, fair enough. Do you mean 16th? 30, well, 30, 32nd, I, that sounds right. I think trem, trem picking is 32nd notes, and then 16 is kind of that galloping, like, hate forest type thing. Oh, I see. I always thought of hate forest as trem. You're when, oh, when hate forest is well, doing the double. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. The like, double pedal, that, so. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. 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 Uh, that makes sense. Um, well, gosh, maybe this is a, this has been an obstacle to my musical advancement the whole time.
So, um, we often do interviews completely out of sequence with the review, either maybe a little before it or maybe way after it, but uh, we just did your review the other week, so um, what'd you make of it? Now you can... Uh, I thought... Um, I think a lot of the things you guys said were pretty fair. Uh, I mean, I didn't have much problem with it. There were some parts where... I think you hit the nail on the head, and there were some other parts where I was a little bit confused, like you were talking about. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of like riffs you compared uh, our stuff to that I didn't really see. You know, that mm-hmm. were probably influenced by other riffs. But um, you know, uh, I guess the only thing I guess I wanted, I guess the only thing I guess I could add to your critique of it is that um, the. The last song, how you guys were saying that the uh, that the the main riff to that kind of feels un, unfinished, and mm-hmm. uh, I I kind of wrote it that way. I kind of wanted it to be more of a uh, like punkier, if that makes sense. Like I kind of wanted it to be like three chords, very the uh, kind of like an anthem. You know what I mean? I get what you mean. Yeah, you just wanted to be sort of uh, this sort of repeated, insistent, stompy riff. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, I mean, writing that, like, I knew people were going to say that, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. You know, because I like it, so I don't really give I don't really care. But like, uh, the the critique is definitely valid. I get it, and I get that there's, you know, I get that most people that most black metal people would probably not. You know, would probably wouldn't hear it that way, but you know, I had my own. Uh, I had my own idea with it, and I rolled with it. I'm glad I did because I love that. It's probably like my my favorite song on the album. I I get what you mean, dude. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the um, I I want to uh, I think the death metal guy had his own very specific idea of what kind of riff that was and how it was supposed to go. Uh, I disavow. Um, I heard. I heard his point about like feeling like maybe it could have been developed more, but like, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I get what you mean about wanting it to be that specific kind of riff rather than another kind of, you're like, I wrote it as a three chord riff because I wanted it to be a three chord riff. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 For sure. You know, and if anything, maybe that kind of jangly, the, the, the kind of jangly, anthemic, repetitive part, hypnotic part, might be more like, um, I remember also when we talked a while back, you mentioned like in Pest Noir, and there's right. songs like that on Ballad Contra L'Enemy Francoeur, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Very, very, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm very influenced by uh, the musical aspect of Pesty Noir, and, uh, yeah, yeah, those kind of, like, drunken, like, you know what I mean? Like, those kind <laughs> yeah. of, like, drunken, like, in and out type riffs, so it's kind of, like, what I went, what I went for, and I think, I, I think I kind of, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I, I liked that song. But. I'll listen, no, fair enough, man, I'll listen to it again with, uh, with new ears, um, I'll, 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 I'll see how, how it feels, I was, I was playing the record prior to us talking tonight and enjoying it. It's, uh, you know, it's one thing, it's one thing to listen to something, uh, like sort of with a critical ear before the show. And then it's nice to be able to go back after the show and get enjoyment right, totally, out of it. It's a totally, I never understood how reviewers did it. Cause sometimes I'll sit in my car, like on a long drive and mm-hmm. I'll just be like, all right, I'm going to like critique this record. And it's just so fucking boring. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I don't know how you guys do it, but yeah. I would say it's a, um, I mean, you know, like I, I don't draw a firm, I guess, you know, maybe it's a disability. Like I can't help doing it. Um, sure. like when I'm listening to things for fun, I think this is probably true of the death metal guy too. When I'm listening to things for, f- I started reviewing records way back in the day, mostly because I was reviewing records while I was like, like taking a shower or taking a shit just in my head, right. you know? And it was just something I couldn't turn off. And, you know, you listen to something. I don't feel that it, like, it doesn't ruin the experience of listening to it, but it's definitely different from just, like... You see, for me, it does. For me, it's, like, like overanalyze something. Overanalyzing something is, like, the... It's, like, my 
it's how I, it's not how I listen to music. You know what I mean? I just enjoy mm-hmm. things for what they are. And, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, I mean. I guess here's if the over anal if the analysis ruins the music for you, it's this is what I say. If if the analysis ruins the experience of hearing the music for you, or if after you've sort of critically approached it, like you just don't even enjoy the album anymore, I think that either means that like it either means you could be reviewing it differently. Right. It means like maybe you're thinking of it in the wrong way. So like one way people start out reviewing things is sort of by comparing them to kind of ideal versions of the album that they'd like to hear. Right. And like that will only make you unhappy. Right. Yeah, you, totally. Then you're, you're just second guessing. You know, you're just second guessing a guitarist who's probably better than you. Right. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, and. Or, on the other hand, it could mean maybe you don't like the record that much. I've definitely had records where I've thought about them a bit and then decided, in fact, I don't actually like this. Um, right. But, um, but yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, it's an instinctive thing. Uh, but, like, but, yeah, no, it was it's cool just, bec- that's a record, that, that what you guys did is a record that's very sort of um, just affirmative and forceful. So it's cool to just listen to it and rock out. Right, sure. Speaking of which, oh, here's here's another thing. A thing we talked about in the review, like, um, and that I would, was curious for your take on is the relatively short length of it. Why? What was the? I guess it probably has something to do with the constraints under which the time, you know, the studio yeah, and time constraints. It's it's pretty much entirely that. I mm-hmm. mean, um, I had a. Uh, I think 14 songs that I had ready for the mm-hmm. release, but there was just not enough time to record them. And again, this is not an, an like nihilist noise being like, you know, like th- they were nothing but cool. And if I came to them saying I need more time, then they definitely would have given it to me. But I had like, a, I had a weird thing about that and I just kind of wanted to get it out. So um, it could have been longer, but the plus side of that is that there's more songs for the next album. And, um, you know, I kind of grew up listening to shorter punk records, you know, so uh, it doesn't bother me, you know, I, so. I, f- you know. I feel that, yeah, I don't know. I, I I am definitely okay overall with the general trend towards shorter full lengths, no, I, I think. Mean, well, yeah. Goat, Moon's, Goat Moon's last record is like the same length as ours, you know, and people love that, so mm-hmm. uh, it's not, to me. Was it, it? It was like, probably like 29 minutes. When, is it a Stella Polaris? Yeah. Interesting. I didn't realize that. It's um, yeah, Stella well, Polaris. Probably, but probably because the Goat Moon record is like miles better than ours. But like <laughs> the um, the what I'm saying is that like I, to me, it's kind of beside. Like you know, it, it doesn't matter much to me. Like the the length of a record, you know. For sure. That that's yeah. That that's a fair answer. It's and uh, yeah. Also with hardcore records, it's like you know the best hardcore records are often under twenty minutes. So oh, absolutely. I'm a huge mm. fan of I'm a huge fan of hardcore. So like yeah, yeah I, I kind of grew up in that like uh, that mindset. So I mean, um, I don't know. The the next one is one thousand percent going to be a lot longer. Um, like mm-hmm. I said, because I have a lot of leftover songs that I still feel like I would want to put out. Um, mm-hmm. So I I would like to do like a double LP. I think that'd be awesome. But uh Yeah, dude, that'd be sick. Yeah, because I mean I always loved like, you know, growing up like double LPs or like I was always a vinyl collector. Um just my, my dad mm-hmm. my dad got me into that at a super young age and uh double LPs to me were always like the the total package of like physical graffiti and like Double Live Gonzo, Ted Nugent, you know, what I mean, like, mm-hmm. it, like that type of stuff is just very, like, you know, get, kiss, kiss alive, like the double record is, is just kind of like, I say, if I have any goal in writing music, it would be to make like a, like a double record, you know, I don't know, it sounds dude, dumb, fucking but, like, do it then, yeah, like yeah. it's, like that, I would say that's the only thing that I would really want to get out of that is just to have this like long, like, like. 50 minute long like just it's like all like eight seven eight minute songs just like a huge release you know what i mean like huge like huge is in like you know long song you know what i'm trying to say i know what you mean yeah no that's a good concrete goal also because then you make it less about my goal is to achieve this or that kind of transcendent masterpiece and more 
my goal is to accomplish this inherently impressive task. And then right, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that that's pretty cool. You know, for me, that's funny. My, I grew up with my dad listening to like CDs and I grew up in like CD land before they were perceived as, before they became kind of obsolete, right? Right. Yeah. Where you'd either want, now it's you either want full digital or you want some kind of irreplicable well, hard copy. I, I definitely grew up in the, the digital age, and that's how mm-hmm. I discovered most music as a kid. Mm-hmm. But, like, my dad got me very into, like, classic rock. And classic rock is still probably, I don't want to say it's my number one genre, because black metal definitely is, but classic rock is definitely a close second. And uh, the, the like, that's just, like, that's, the to me, that's vinyl. That's, like, you know, what vinyl, like, that's, like, the music you listen to on vinyl, you know, and... Uh, I inherited my dad's collection from the seventies, uh, the six my uh, like the sixties and seventies, eighties, uh, all throughout. I inherited his giant collection, and that's, that's kind of cool. how I that's kind of how I just uh, that's how my my journey into like this kind of music started. And uh, I don't know. So yeah, vinyl to me is always number one. I like CDs too. I have a lot of CDs. I have a lot of tapes. I, mm-hmm. I, have, shit, I have a shitload of tapes. But like tapes you know, are fun, dude. Yeah, I like tapes a lot. I mean, um, I like CDs because you know, I, I have my truck. I, I have a CD player in my truck, so mm-hmm. you know it's nice mm-hmm. to have a physical thing while you're driving. You know, and plus, yeah, when you put a CD in a car, it just sounds better than you know playing it through a aux cord or whatever the fuck. I get what you mean. Yeah, dude. When I was when when I was a kid, uh, I. The car, the parents' car that I drove in high school didn't even have a CD player. So I just had to listen to classic rock radio all the time. Or I just. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I grew up with. I grew up with my parents' cars always being, like, you know, uh, tape. But, uh. Mm-hmm. I think the first car that my family got with a, with a CD player is super weird. It was like the CD player was in the trunk. It's super weird. And we. Every, every, every time my dad wanted to put on a new CD, he'd have to pull over and. Get out of the car, open the trunk, and put a CD in the thing, and then turn around and then get back in the car. It's pretty weird. Dude, yeah, I don't know. cop pulls you over and is like, uh, "Excuse me, are you listening to any um, black metal CDs?" And you're like, uh, "Sorry, sir, my CD player's in the trunk, <laughs> yeah. and the trunk is locked." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Uh, well, that that's that. Yeah, that's a cool story. And I think as far as the double LP. I think maybe what's happening right now is that there was definitely a decisive trend towards shorter full lengths over the last few years, maybe just because of digital allows people to release things more quickly. And so they're like, fuck it, why not? Right. Um, and I think in some sense that's been good because people have been trimming the fat, right? On the oh, other totally. hand. totally, yeah. No, yeah. it's definitely more more killer, less filler. Yeah. yeah. And, and on the other hand, lately, I think since we've been doing the show, we've started to realize that there are some people doing much longer records again. And so maybe maybe the real problem is the four is like the 40 minute record or the uh, the 45 minute LP. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's uh, sort of hanging out in a middle ground where there is filler, but uh, not a sort of. Just long enough for there to be filler and too short for it to be some kind of like experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely mm-hmm. a uh, that's a good that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Word. All right. So, um, what else? Um, let's pan out a little bit then. Um, at a uh, Sylvan Sylvan Throne, you guys are very proud of being Pennsylvania black metal. Um. I have the Sill and Throne long sleeve with Pennsylvania black metal on it. It is a sick right. shirt. Um, yeah. So who else is Pennsylvania black metal? Uh, it's just our bands. We, <laughs> we try to. We try to well, we they're, they're, It's kind of funny because there definitely have been a couple bands from a PA. They're like, "Hey, can we get in on this?" And we're like, "No." <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of our our like. Um, See, they're they're okay. So something interesting is that I I came up with the PA I came up with the PA BM thing a long time ago, um, and I never really did anything with it because, uh, well, it's our it's a guy Skeech. I'm not gonna use his real name. Yeah, sure. But uh, uh, 
you know, I kind of, I, like, we were t- just talking about it, and he's very good at, like, what do you, like, a graphic design mm-hmm. or whatever, and uh, I just kind of told him about it, and then I think, like, a week later, he sent me, like, this mock-up of a sigil, and I was like, yeah, like, that's the kind of shit that, like, like I want it to be kind of this, like, inner circle of, like, this... You know, you know what I'm trying to say, like this inner circle of like black metal from this specific area. You know yeah. I mean? So PABM is specifically your circle, right? And, and it's if not, somebody it's from, not if somebody to, if it's somebody, not con- it's not contained to us. Like it's not a, it's not a like, a, uh, like it's not like a. You know, we feel like we're better than other bands because you know, like if there was a band that I. have it was like I was really chill with the guys and everything, and I thought they were really good. I would have like we, I don't think we none of us would have any problem like associating ourselves got with it, them and it. kind of like doing that. Like it's not a closed thing like that, but it has to be a very specific type thing. And, yeah, it's uh, like Black Twilight Circle or House of First Light. A, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's and um, you know, what kind of surprised me was that after like long after we kind of coined this whole thing and. You know, uh, we started putting it on our releases and our tapes and stuff like that. Uh, somebody sent me a link to um, another, I guess, from like the early 2000s. Like uh, somebody else did a PABM thing. Hmm. And uh, it the, the logo that they, it was pretty much ours, except it was a pentagram. And I was like, fuck, like people are going to think that we're totally trying to jack these guys. Like this, like we got to change it or whatever. And then like I thought about it, I was like... Does it really matter? Like, I mean, there no. Like, I, I, I'm very like into like lo- like the the old school local PA like Pennsylvania stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? And I didn't even know about this. So like, I'm sure that like most people wouldn't even know that. Well, I guess they do now because I'm talking about it. But like, that was in no way to try to like jack their thing or whatever. That was just kind of sure like, it's something that I can. And it's not like it's some super intricate thing. It's just our our state and then black metal behind it, in front of it, you know, or behind it. So, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a, you know, this crazy intellectual, like super personal thing that we all came up with. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, how many you know, bands have named their record something like lifting the black veil? Exactly. Yeah. I you mean, know. you know, but th- those guys, I mean, in the bands that were involved with that stuff, like they were pretty bad anyway. So it's not really, like, <laughs> well, there you go. Concerned with, you yeah, know? you're, you're rescuing the term from ignominy. Oh, uh, sure. No, but know, I mean, we yeah. always had great respect for the older PA bands, like, you know, like Crucifier and stuff. Like, yeah. So tell me about that scene then. Cause I do not, th- when I think of black metal from Pennsylvania, God, I remember back in the day, there was like a pretty good black metal, hardcore band called infernal stronghold. Oh yeah. I know those dudes. Yeah. Yeah, or I think of like um, was Watchmaker from Pennsylvania? I'm not familiar. I don't know. No, that no, it wasn't. Uh, there were that that that's really sort of that's that's on the, that that's a bit of an old reference even for me. I didn't really listen to them back in the day. That's like older millennial, younger Gen X or kind of stuff. They're a really yeah. good band, but they were like just crazy black grind in the early two thousands. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, so tell me about this older Pennsylvania scene. Well, I mean, I wasn't there, but I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's just sure. Of course, there, there was, there is. Uh, I think that there was when you listen to music from your immediate area, and it's something that you're so involved with, like you know, the black metal, you know, scene. I don't mm-hmm. like the term scene, but you know, it's like kind of the, you know, it's something that you're involved with now. It's just kind of interesting to look back and see that there was this whole like Bloodstorm, you know, Crucifier. Uh, there's a ton, you know, that are all slipping my mind right now. But, uh, you know, um, that always just interested me, and I wanted to represent that in a way that wasn't corny. And, uh, you know, and there's also even going back further, like um, Black Task, great 80s black thrash band from from Philly that actually uh, – Literally, the house that they recorded. I, you, I heard you typing. Are you looking them up on? Metal uh, I am. Yeah, yeah, Black Task. Yeah, uh, two words. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, thrash power metal. It says, but I guess it sounds yeah. more black metal too. No, nowadays it's nowadays it's much more regarded as like a early like black metal release. Got it. But it was crazy finding that album because uh, 
I looked on the I found, I have you know I got the LP at first. Uh, mm -hmm. I actually got it at a flea market and mm -hmm. um, just looked cool. And I brought it home and I opened it. and I looked at the flyer in there and the zip code was my zip code. Sick. And, yeah, and so like I realized and I like read the mailing address. Literally, it's my neighbor. It's it's not the my neighbor that lives there now, but it was recorded at that house. You know what I mean? So that's yeah, like that's, to me like that to me that's like sick as fuck. Ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's 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 the gods, man. Yeah. So that's, like I mean I I fuck with and there's also really sick like you know Anvil bitch. That's not black metal, but I have a specific fascination with like local. 80s and 90s metal bands from my area mm -hmm. and like i said i just wanted to represent that in a way that i felt wasn't corny and definitely i mean it might have been my brainchild but it never would have come to life if it wasn't if it wasn't for guy skeech because you know he's much more of a do it person than i am you know what i mean i'll talk about something forever but i'll never do it he's like you know he's the person that like gets shit done you know what i mean you're the concept guy Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we're all the concept guy. I just work yeah. a little less than everyone. Else. I, I, I get what you mean, dude. I'm a, pro a massive procrastinator. Um, the the death metal guy is definitely the uh, the practical one of our uh, collaboration. But um, dude, uh, yeah. So Black Task. How does that? That's interesting name. How does it sound? Is it kind of like Venom NME type yeah, stuff? It's like, the, if I had to compare it to anything, it's like a power metal. It's This is going to sound retarded, but it's like a power metal version of Blasphemy. That it's sounds like, that sounds it, fucking sick. Yeah, it's um. like, it's like, it's like that same type of production mm -hmm. with like, without growls, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, uh, or I should say speed metal, not power metal, but like, no, it, I get it's what like, you mean. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's awesome. They're, they're killer, killer, Dude. killer fucking band. That sounds very much like a Terminus approved band, so we got to check that out. Uh, yeah, because um, yeah, I love stuff that's at the intersection of kind of like war speed metal and the uh, the death. Right, and it's totally it's totally primitive. It's pr it's like eighty five or something like mm -hmm. that, like so early. It's awesome. Do you know which is Hammer? Yeah, I th if it's if it's if it's the right band that I'm thinking of, I think we're supposed it's, to play them. It, play with them. It's a band that was... They have been active again lately. Apparently, I didn't know about them until a couple years ago where there, when there was a reissue, but the guys from Blasphemy said that... Um, oh, Witch's Hammer. Never mind. I'm thinking of a different band. Yeah, yeah but so I know who you're talking about. Now, Witch's but. Hammer were like the one band playing what they would consider like satanic black metal or satanic speed metal um, before them in British Columbia. And that they right. like... Yeah, um, Witch's Hammer is really sick. It's also just like very... Uh, yeah, well, you can hear it's it's definitely technically speaking speed metal, but you can definitely hear how it connects to blasphemy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. it's like, a, yeah, I, I I know who you're talking about now, but at the mm -hmm. I was thinking of a band with a similar name. No, for sure. I mean, like, how many bands are? Yeah, I mean, so many Witch bands. Hammer, yeah. Hammer, yeah, yeah. Witch Hammer, whatever. Um. But yeah, uh, so cool. All right. Oh, we got some good name drops from that. That's awesome. Um. Uh, and then to wrap it up, um, you'd mentioned before we started some other projects coming up. Are you comfortable talking about any of those yet? Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna, uh, I, I got, um, I mean, I'm not gonna drop anything before it happens, you know, cause yeah. I don't want, you know, but, uh, I got an OI project coming up that I'm going to start writing for soon. I got a, uh. I got another black metal project with uh, members from Go Corpse and uh, uh, Compry, which is a Thai band. From mm -hmm. uh, um, I have a solo project that I'm slowly chipping away at, um, and the next Sylvan Throne and the next Gotex that we're recording uh, tomorrow. Word. And you were saying Compry is that kind of uh, for for everyone. How do you spell that? Uh, it's uh, you're gonna. Ha I'll send you the link later. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm probably not even saying it right, but I'll, sure. I'll it's, it's on the Greg Beal channel. Or whatever. Yeah, I'll, no, uh, yeah. For for our listeners, it's the thing on the Greg Beal channel that has like the the Thai script, and it sounds kind of like the the Thai answer to Vothana. You sort of yeah yeah. Or um or also for pe people the um, uh, Laska V. If you just if you just type in Greg Beal Thailand, mm -hmm. it'll like ninety percent sure like pop up. Cool. So I guess that about wraps it up. Um, can you think of 
I was thinking, we often ask our interviewees to pick a, a track to wrap it up. Can you think of a Ooh. Black Task song you'd like to play to oh, conclude the interview? Uh, Sex and Destruction. Sexy destruction! Sexy destruction! Splash! <laughs>